everybody and welcome back. Uh, welcome back to JWS Exclusive's Woodshop channel. Uh, today I'm working on some catch-all trays or phone trays, whatever you feel like calling them. Uh, as you can see, I've lost some footage already of me ripping down this maple and this special orange wood that I had uh, sent to me by a cu uh, previous customer. Um, this orange is just really, really nice and I wanted to try to make something unique out of it. I thought about doing a cutting board, but Everybody kind of does cutting boards, and I'm sure I'll get to it eventually, but I wanted to do something interesting today, which is make some catch-all trays. So as you can see here, I'm getting it glued up, got my type on 3. Uh, in total, this is probably going to be about 18 inches in length, and about 6 to 4, I want to say it was 4 and 3 quarters when I measured it uh, in uh, width. So I'm just going to spread this glue around. I want to get a nice tight and even uh, disperse of this, get a nice even clamping pressure. Uh, I don't want to make sure there's any. I don't want there's any gaps. I want to make sure that this is really tight together. Uh, so when I glue this up, since it is uh, should be long grain to long grain, it'll glue up really nice and tight. So unfortunately, some of my other clamps were being used at the moment for another big project I got going on. So all I had was this one and one extra, and then just my regular clamps itself. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I kept this even, so I'm doing two glue ups in this one frame. I don't normally like doing this, but circumstances are how they are, and I needed to make another video. And I really wanted to make something with this wood since it's been sitting in my shop for nearly a month. So I'm going to go ahead and make er make sure everything is all nice level, uh, make sure everything is on the same plane, because when I get this out, I don't want to run it to the planer all lot. I want to make it to where it's all uh, set and even. Once I get that, as you're going to see, I got my clamps on the sides, making sure all this wood is clamped and ready with nice even pressure. Don't want to over tight. I don't want to bow these boards, but I am going to put one across the top just to try to keep that even. All right, that's all glued up. We're going to let it dry. I'm going to move pretty quick through this. I'm going to fast forward through here. So if you have any questions or you can't see this very well, feel free to stop and take notes, do whatever you need to do. This is just the basic setup, the thickness of the wood and what my blanks are going to look like and where I'm going to set my bit. Uh, and then total this entire build took three bits, a 30 degree engraving bit, quarter inch down cut, and that bowl bit that I went over in my last video for the red oak three dish serving tray. Okay, so I apparently lost all, almost half my video of the planing and the CNC cutting all this out. So just a reminder, we used that three quarter bowl bit, the quarter inch down cut bit to cut the perimeter and that 30 degree V bit. Just remember with the 30 degree V bit, whatever you stop that bowl bit at, so for this it would have been 0.5, when you start your path for that V cutting, it has to start at a depth of 0.50 and then you set the depth. Make sure you take your time on it. Sometimes it's good to have a practice piece. Sometimes you just nail it on the first try. Luckily, I got it on the first try. And of course, if you've seen some of my videos, I like to inlay epoxy. So now we get them out of the form. I just use a little rotary tool to cut those tabs up there. The tabs just hold everything in place while you're cutting. All right, so now we have them out of the mold and we're just gonna give them some sanding. We're gonna start at 60 grit, uh, remove all that excess epoxy. I did that off camera just because it took a lot longer to do it by hand than wanted. I'm going to use 60 grit just to take off those uh, tabs around the corners, uh, get everything all nice flushed up. I want it to be nice and uh, all those burrs taken away. Then I'm going to hit it with some 220 grit to get it smooth make so that way we can get our clear coat on it on a nice even uh, surface. And now I get to sand 
for what feels like an eternity. Uh, all you woodworkers out there know, I absolutely hate sanding. It is necessity when it comes to this, but I can't stand it. As it makes a mess, it gets everywhere. It's just more to clean up, but we gotta do what we gotta do. And yes, that was a Star Wars joke. Now that it is all sand and prepped, we are going to move over to the workbench and start uh, doing some finishing details. I got my router here. I got a little chamfer bit in there. I'm just going to add a chamfer to the top and bottom. Uh, I like chamfering. It just makes it feel all nice and together. It breaks those hard edges. You give them a sand, they turn out very well. Uh, I just don't like rounding over stuff. It just feels weird, so I like chamfer. But again, that's personal preference. You don't want it chamfered. Do whatever you feel. All right, I'm going to speed this up since you've seen this a thousand times on many woodworking videos. But now's a good time as any. Guys, please like, comment, subscribe. Check out my other social medias. Uh, I'm trying to get this shop off the ground. and trying to get my TikTok, Instagram, Facebook all uh, higher subscribers. So please head on over there and check it out. All right, the chamfering's done. Now we're gonna hit those edges again with 220 grit sandpaper, taking off any rough that you feel. Now's the time to take your time. If you missed something in previous sandings, go ahead and hit it. This is the last step of uh, sanding before we get to our clear coat. And now we're gonna get on to branding. Yes, I brand everything. It's my favorite thing to do, honestly, on every project. Get it red hot. Make sure you got it going the right way. Give it a nice press, nice and even. You see the smoke? Rack it a little bit back and forth to get a nice even press, and off it comes, and it gives you a nice smooth burn. Take your time, guys. Learn how to use your brander. Don't go crazy with this. Uh, you don't want to overburn your stuff. Now, after that, we're gonna hit that again with uh, 220 grit sandpaper. Take off all that extra char. Uh, we want it to look very nice we want it to feel nice we want it to be part of it so when that clear coat hits it it all blends evenly and one extra thing before uh, you put any clear coat or anything on this hit it with some compressed air or some tack cloth I had some tack cloth laying around to get off the sawdust uh, but either or works whatever you feel all right now that we got our surface all wiped down I'm gonna hit it with some minwax clear coat uh, semi gloss we're gonna give it a nice hefty coat on the first one. Make sure we get around those bends. Uh, do I like doing a kind of hefty coat at first? Make sure I don't overspray though. Just take your time. If you feel like you've oversprayed, you can always dab it off, let it dry, give it a sand, and start over. All right, we let that clear coat dry on that side for about an hour, hour twenty minutes. Actually, it was more like two. But now we're gonna go ahead and turn over and get the other side. Uh, I was a little bit more liberal with the clear coat on this side just because of how that bend is making sure I get it there I did have to wipe some of it off uh, after this just to make sure that I got it all but make sure you do get that spot those spots we don't want any uneven coating and I am gonna hit this with like 600 grit sandpaper when it's all set and dry Hope everybody liked the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and check out all the other social medias.